Okay, Lord willing, we are at the conclusion of the full study. We look at the final verses, Isaiah 9, 17, about the fool. Been a long study. And yeah, it's been an important study. A study that found myself to be a fool. Not all the time. But being a fool sometimes is sometimes too much. When we have found fool, fools, foolishness, foolishly, and the ending of a study folly, have we not found it to be a sin? How we found out to the scriptures that there's only a couple good foolish things in the Bible and was a man that would keep his mouth shut. And yet we have seen fool as in many sins. Denying God from the heart. Sexual rape. Of going against the word of God in rebellion. Not being wise nor in prudence, having no understanding and no fear of God, has been the fool. And if we, as Bible-believing, born-again Christians, have achieved at least one full category, as we're going to look at 223, today and there are 226 if we achieve one full position or foolishness or folly does not the Bible say that if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins does not the Bible say to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin is it not just one sin that makes us a sinner that put Christ on the cross? And being in foolishness, we shame our Savior in the Holy Spirit that dwells in us in a holy and righteous God. Isaiah 9, 17, Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. Neither shall have mercy on, the father, on their fathers. Their fathers have been killed. They're gone. And widows. Women left destitute of husbands. For everyone that is a hypocrite. That's a good word, isn't it? Do you want to be known as a hypocrite? You say one thing and you do another. You do, but your mouth doesn't back it up. Everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer. That's not good. We are now not in good standing of Isaiah 9, 17. And every mouth speaketh folly. How many times has this full study involved the mouth? And yet Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew has told us every idle word, man, saved or lost, is going to have to give an account thereof. Is it wrong to be a hypocrite? Absolutely. Is it a sin to be an evildoer? Correct. And the mouth that speaketh folly, that speaketh sin. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Words are able to be sin. Rumors. Lies. To do harm. Insult. 
to vow and not pay, injustice, prejudice. Again, Matthew 12, 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that man, doesn't say a saved man, doesn't say a lost man, doesn't say a Jewish man, doesn't say a Gentile man, it doesn't say a church, it doesn't say a Christian, it says that men shall speak. They shall give an account thereof. In the day of judgment. We, Lord willing, if I, if I can make this short, are going to finish this study. And if I've gotten through 222 individual studies of the word fool and folly in the Bible, and I may have missed one or two, I'm not perfect. I've come to 223 and I have spoken folly. I have spoken sin. I have with my mouth. And going to find that idle words. And unless I confess my sins before God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will have to give an account. I have opened up my mouth without necessity. I have opened up my mouth to speak. I have opened my mouth to no gratification to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, goes on to say in Matthew, yea or nay, or else it's evil. I believe that's Matthew 5 or Matthew 6. That your communication be yea or nay. Jeremiah 23, 13. And when you turn to Jeremiah 23, 13, does not James in his epistle warn us in death of this tongue of ours that's set on the fire of hell? I can kill a man with my tongue. I can do so much harm with my tongue that I can abuse a person, not with a weapon, yeah, but yet with a weapon, my mouth. There have been men and women whose lives have been ruined or maybe suicide because of someone's mouth. And Lord, I, I repent of my sins of if I've ever used my mouth. And I know before April 21st, 1987, when I, when I was saved, I know when I was in school, I know I used my mouth for, for sin. I know I degraded people, made phone. That ain't right. Jeremiah 23, 13, I have seen folly. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. That's north. They prophesy in Baal, that's a false god, and cause my people, Israel, to sin. False gods and their ministers or clergy are folly, they are sin. Second Corinthians 11, 14 and 15, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Jude 4. For there were certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old, old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Jude 15. To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly, among them that among them of all that their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him the 224 folly sin and 
sin is folly. It is against you that preach another gospel, that preach another spirit, that preaches another Jesus, that preaches of the mouth of Satan or the mouth of the world. When your pulpit, your ministry, your hall, or wherever religion kind of being you have, whoever is of your clergy, if it is of not God, the Bible, the King James Bible, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, manifested in the flesh, that suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You lie in the sin of folly. When you preach another God as they preach Baal, as you preach the God of Jesus Christ that came to North America. The Jesus Christ that is not God. The Jesus Christ has given his throne up to Mary. To Allah. To the multi cabillions of gods of the Indian language of over in Asia. To the family ancestry of the Oriental people. To there is no God at all. Of giving yourself away from the word of God through the King James Bible and the roots thereof to a modern Bible written of man. When your ministers, your clergy, you, when you get a woman that preaches and teaches of the Bible and the Bible says a woman is not to assert the authority over a man, she is in folly. When you have provided traditions over the word of God, which Jesus spoke in ill of sin. And when you place tradition above the word of God, it is sin. It is folly. You say, what is wrong with religion? According to Jeremiah 23, 13, it is folly. It is sin. And it's all over the world. There are Baptist churches today that have brought Baal in. There are Baptist churches that have brought in Christmas trees with Jeremiah 10 preaches against. There are custom and practices of other religions and other gods brought into the Baptist church and his folly. I don't care if your pastor likes it. I don't care if your deacon likes it. I don't care if the greatest church member that's 112 years old in your church. It's folly. It is sin. It's that simple. In this day and age, it needs to be spelled out. 2 Corinthians 11.1 1. Coming down the home stretch, two more. 2 Corinthians 11.1 1. Would to God ye bear with me a little in my folly. And indeed bear with me. Now, Paul has been dealing with the Corinthians, and the Corinthians are just prideful and boasting. Look how great we are. Look, we, we all love Paul, and oh, we love Barabbas, and look at the sins we're doing. Look how great we are. And Paul says, you're just puffed up. And we're just such a wonderful, great church. Sound familiar? We're just so great. We're just so wonderful. We're just so magnificent. We're just so great. You, you make me sick. You're wretched, you're poor, you're miserable, you're blind. And I'm not going to tell you where that is in the Bible. And some Christians are going to hear that and they're going to have no idea what I just quoted from the scriptures. And yet I am speaking about their church. Paul says, let me boast. Let me have a little pride in sin. A little. And boasting is a sin. I am so glad to be American is a sin. I am just proud of my, and you fill in the blank, it's a sin. I'm proud to be of this church. It's a sin. Pride is a sin, and as we saw, fool had nothing to do with wisdom, 
Fool had nothing to do with knowledge. Fool had nothing to do with understanding. Fool was against the characteristics of God. There is no prudence in fool. There is no pride. There is no loftiness. There is no proud in the eyes of God or in his presence. And when you as a Christian will stand up in pride and proud, you have sinned against God. And you need to confess your sins. I think this day and age, I think many Christians at the judgment seat of Christ in this period of time in the last of seen church, eh, they're going to stand before Christ and the things are going to be burnt up as wood, hay or stubble is going to be their pride ship, their proud ship. And like repentance, it's not, brought in the, it's not preached in the church. I have met the preachers who have great pride, how wonderful, how great I am. Tells me how great God is. And Paul's tongue and teak, I mean, he's using what the church is, pride. I don't think Paul could get away with that for too long. Last one, 226, 2 Timothy 3.9. What a study. You, if you haven't, need to go back to each one of these. Download them, listen to them, give them to your friends, put them on, do whatever you can. I give full right for you to get this out to family, friends, enemies, whoever. Now, if you're the misuse, you're the cut, paste, tamper with, that's between you and God. If you make me say something I did not say by editing or anything like that, that's between you and God. God knows what this lesson has been. But I ask you to go back and get each one of these and listen to them because you will find at least every other one you will find yourself as I found myself. You're not going to be all the fools. And if you are... <laughs> If you find yourself in the majority of this lesson, you need to stop, get right with God, repent of your sins, and be saved. And if you are saved, involved with much, many of the foolish study, we, you need to get right with God. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say, seriously, you need to get back reading your Bible. 2 Timothy 3.9 but they shall proceed no further. <clears throat> what a close for a mess. Now, I didn't play it like this. This is the last thing of the folly. <laughs> and it concludes with God, but they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifested unto all men, as theirs also was. Sin will be opened beforehand. Except in 1 John 1 19, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Christian, 126 times we look at the word fool, and if you have not put it under the blood, it's going to stand the judgment seat of Christ. As wood, hay, or stubble as a loss. We've already quoted to you from Matthew 12. Every idle word that man shall speak, he'll give account thereof. And a lot of my jury, this study has been about the mouth. There's a word I try to use every day. And you may call me foolish, but I try to use the word stupid every day. Stupid is a word that needs to be brought back to life. And you would be stupid to have these sins laid out before you, before God your Savior as a Christian. Now let me speak to a lost man. Maybe somebody's giving you a copy or you've fallen upon this. Maybe you're angry. 
Maybe your heart is, is twisting. Every single foolish act that we've studied, and you didn't do all the fools. You, you have not done 226. And then again, who knows? One sin will condemn you into hell and the lake of fire that burns forever. The sin of rejecting Jesus Christ as your savior, as the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you have found yourself, maybe you just, here's the last, here's the last one you found. You have not done the other. You probably maybe not will do the other. In the short list that you found yourself today, have you ever had pride? Have you ever listened to the mouth of a, of a religion or false teacher? Have you ever spoken with your mouth in sin? If you have just done one of the very few of this study that we did to conclude this study, if you had just been part of one, your mouth being guilty before God, and you are not washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not saved. You have not been born again. You have trusted in anything but Jesus Christ. Not only is that one sin that you maybe heard today be your sin, will be displayed for all the world to see at the great white throne judgment, but every single one of your sins, and maybe sins that we haven't even studied, but 226 times we, we, we hit sins. And I have not kept track of the sins. But I need not to. Because an important thing that we have seen from the foolish study is. With our mouths. In one chapter in the book, in the epistle of James, proved our mouth sin. We are not wise. We have no knowledge, no prudence, and no understanding when it comes to be a fool. And if you have never trusted and never put your faith in, in, in the shed blood of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died, According to the scriptures, not tradition, and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, Jesus is not on that cross today, as many religions will picture him. He is seated at the right hand of the Father today, willing and able and wanting you to, to believe on him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You must repent. You must put your sins and be sorry for your sins and to realize, to acknowledge before God that you have sinned before God and man. That will remove the fool. That will remove the foolishness. That will move, remove the folly. And that will remove your sins through the blood. It will wash you and cleanse you and to be born again. When Jesus said again, as we looked at earlier, every idle word man shall give it account. That you're guilty there. That's it. We're going to believe we're going to move on to the next study of the, of the Ten Commandments. We don't need to do the Ten Commandments. We can stop at Matthew 12 and say, let's deal with the idle tongue. If Jesus said the idle tongue, I shall give an account thereof. And if you're not washed in the blood, your idle words are going to condemn you. Never mind about dishonoring your parents. No mind, uh, you know, a false witness. Never mind, you know, did I keep the Sabbath or I didn't keep the Sabbath. Or if I have, I, idle. 
What is the definition of the folly of idle tongue? Sports, news, politics, religion, sex, booze, whatever that does not glorify God and his son Jesus is idle talk. Jokes. And I go far as say text for this day and age. People don't talk no more, they text. I text today a woman, you know, she's gonna have she's going to the doctors for for a test result. They say, hey, listen, you know, I'm praying for you. Encourage, that's for the Lord. Bible verses, that's for the Lord. I hope you'll go back. Uh, I hope you followed all the way, all 226. If not, go back to our YouTube video, to our SoundCloud. However you got this video, get the others. Not only for you, but for your family, for your friends, for your co-workers. Let's get the word out. Let's not be fools for God. Let's not stand in the presence of Jesus Christ. Whether the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judge. Let's not stand before God as a fool. Because being a fool is a sin. It's a sin against God. And it can lose rewards. It may cast you into hell if you're not saved. It may, may deny a Christian right of inheritance in the millennium. It may take away a crown. If you're unsaved, it may put you in a lake of fire that burns forever. Now, I don't know if this is going to be so as I close. This is my last statement for Christians. Born again Christians. The Bible says that we're going to get a new name. I don't know how that's going to work, but let me just throw this out there. And if, it, if it's foolish, and I'll repent of it. But I don't. If we get a new name by the character that we lived on this planet, I think Paul deserves the name Faithful. I think Peter deserves a name of Obedient. If we get a new name, I don't know what my new name would be. It wouldn't be up there in the greatest. But can you imagine Jesus handing to you and saying, I don't know how he do it, but here's your new name. And you look at it, well, Lord, what's that mean? It means you're foolish. You've been a fool. You walked in folly. In the gospel that I saved your soul, you were washed, and yet you walked in foolishness. Here's your new name for all eternity. Fool. You say, would that be? So? I don't. I don't know. I hold to the second book to the Bible that one must read, Pilgrim's Progress. Every man had a character name that represented that character. What if? What if that would be us, an allegory in, into heaven, that God would give us our character name here? What it could be would you would like to have any new name given to you that would represent the title a fool a gesture or folly whether it's right or not think about it what do you want to be remembered in heaven well done thou good and faithful servant 
or fool. <laughs>